Hey everyone, I'm Julia with Sunday Sounds, and today we're giving you our top 10 main stage tips you should know. We are confident that these 10 tips will help transform the way you work in main stage and give you a better understanding of all the tools that main stage provides. Let's dive in. In main stage, you can designate a specific tempo and time signature to apply to each patch you have loaded in your concert. Simply click on your patch, open the inspector, go to the patch attributes tab, and there you'll be able to type in your custom tempo. You can also set your time signature to whatever you need it to be. Now, if you turn on the metronome to play along, the tempo will match what you need. It will also guarantee that any time-based effects like delay or arps will sync up with your desired tempo. Recording inside of Mainstage is extremely easy to do. Click on Preferences. Then you go to the Audio tab and look in this middle recording section. Here, you'll be able to set a location for your recordings to save on your hard drive. You'll also be able to designate what kind of file you want the recording to be. Once you've got your settings locked in, you'll just want to go up to the record button in the top right corner and then click when you're ready. Then just click that button again once you're done. And now you'll see that the file shows up in the location that you selected in your settings. One of the coolest things that Mainstage has to offer is its versatile workspace editor. You can drag any knob, fader, button, or keyboard into this main workspace and assign it to any parameters in any of your sounds. Just go up to the layout mode button in the top left of your screen. Then you'll see a screen controls palette in the bottom section of the screen. This is where you can select all kinds of objects to place in your workspace, and then they can be mapped to real hardware controls on a MIDI controller or external device. One of the easiest things to add mappings to is a level meter. This can be extremely helpful when playing live to know that your instrument is making sound as expected. Then we're going to go back up to the edit mode. Once you're back in edit mode, simply click on your level meter. You'll see the screen control inspector below open up a new set of tabs. Select the sound that you want to be linked to the level meter. Then we're gonna select level. Now when you play, you'll see the level meter light up when audio is sent to it. Now this is just one object with one mapping possibility that you can add to your workspace. There are so many other options available for you to customize your workspace however you'd like. So feel free to play around with mappings until you find a configuration that works for you. Mainstage has a built-in file structuring system that you can use to browse patches from inside the main window. When you download the Mainstage 3 application, a folder titled Mainstage is automatically placed inside of your music folder. I like to save this folder to my favorites so that I can access it easily at any time. Mainstage uses this folder to allow you to recall patches into your concert quickly and easily. To export your patch, make sure you're selected on the patch in the patch list. Then go up to the settings drop-down menu and select save as patch all the way at the bottom. I recommend saving your patches within that Mainstage folder so you can access them from within the program. Now, if I go to add a new patch, go down to my patch library user patches. You can see that patch is right there in the list. Each channel strip within a patch is given a certain number of parameters that you can change. One of those is the layer range. You can change the range in which you want a specific instrument to play by dragging the left and right of the range in the layer editor or by typing in the high key and low key. Let's say you have a sound with a layer range that's up high like this electric piano but you want it to play lower notes. There are several ways that you can do this. If you go to the MIDI input tab, you can transpose the MIDI information down a single octave. You could also achieve this with the Chord Trigger plugin. One of my personal favorite things to do in Mainstage is to create MIDI sequences using a MIDI effect called Chord Trigger. Chord Trigger itself allows you to select an input note on your keyboard and determine what the output note or notes should be. So you could have a single note trigger octaves of that same note, or you could have a single note trigger multiple notes in a chord. And this is especially helpful when trying to play complex arrangements of songs. Or you could even transpose a lead line that you would play in your right hand way far up on the keyboard so that it's out of the way for you to play other notes.
A MIDI sequence is a series of notes that are triggered by playing a single input note. In order to do this, you'll want to have three MIDI effects set up in a row. Chord trigger, ARP, and then chord trigger. In the first chord trigger plugin, you'll want to first select what input note you will play to trigger the sequence. In the lower keyboard, you'll select a series of notes, any notes, that amount in the number of notes of the MIDI sequence. Keep in mind that you'll be reassigning these notes, so whatever notes you choose does not matter. Next, the ARP plugin. You'll want to set the ARP to a rate that you'd like the sequence to play in. Then you'll want to make sure that it's set to upward only. In the pattern window, you can specify what you want the rhythm of the sequence to be by turning on and off certain notes. You'll also want to make sure that these chord buttons are turned off. In the last chord trigger plugin, you'll want to one by one select the notes that you set in the bottom keyboard of the first chord trigger plugin, and then set each of those notes to trigger the actual notes that you want to be heard. Once you have this all set up, your MIDI sequence should be functional. And if you'd like to be able to trigger this sequence on multiple notes, just go to your first chord trigger plugin, select a note you'd like to trigger the sequence, then select the same notes you did for the first input note in that bottom keyboard. Mainstage allows you to connect multiple MIDI instruments at the same time. This means that you can have multiple keyboards set up at the same time in the same concert. This can be helpful if you want to have a specific sound that you want to keep totally separate from the other sounds you're playing. For example, if you have a piano or pad on your main keyboard, then a lead sound on a smaller secondary keyboard. To do this, first you'll want to make sure that both of your keyboards that you want to use are plugged into your computer. Then you'll want to drag two keyboards into the workspace. You can adjust some of the settings like how many keyboard layers are displayed, how many keys are available on each keyboard, and you can also resize all of the components as well. Once you've got both keyboards in the workspace, all you have to do is select a keyboard, click assign, then play a key on the physical keyboard. Then do the same for the keyboards mod wheel and pedal, then on the other keyboard as well. Then click assign again to end. Now that you've got everything set up, it's time to add sounds to your keyboards. Just like creating any other patch, you'll want to browse your patch library for a sound that you'd like to use. Once you've got a sound, select the channel strip, then go to the MIDI input tab and select which keyboard you'd like this sound to be on. If you'd like it to be on both keyboards, select multi timbre and select both. Now just add all the songs you'd like to play on both keyboards and you're ready to play with both. One of the coolest things that Mainstage has to offer is its versatility with mappings. One of the most common hardware controls used to map parameters is the mod wheel. Here at Sunday Sounds, we like to use the mod wheel as our one-stop shop for manipulating sounds, so we'll oftentimes map several parameters to the mod wheel at the same time. There are many ways to add parameters to the mod wheel but we'll just go over a few. The first one is the MIDI input tab. You can use the MIDI input tab to assign the mod wheel to control other things, such as volume, expression, breath, and even draw a new curve for the mod wheel to function on. Just select modulation as the input and whatever you'd like as the output, then draw your curve in the transform window. The second option is in the modulation matrix. Inside several of the instrument plugins, you'll find something called the modulation matrix or mod matrix. It looks slightly different in each instrument, but functions pretty much the same way. Within each mod matrix or modulation window, you can select a parameter in the instrument that you would like to control with the mod wheel, then set the range. This will allow you to control multiple parameters at the same time, and just imagine doing this on multiple channel strips in your patch. The mappings could get pretty complex. 
The final option is the MIDI modifier. The MIDI modifier is a MIDI effect plugin. This effect manipulates the MIDI data being sent into it and translates it into something else, much like the MIDI input tab. All you have to do is select modulation for the input or whatever parameter you want to control as the output. You could even reverse it and have another parameter control the modulation. The possibilities are nearly endless. It's important to know just how much energy your computer is using at any given time. You can set up a CPU meter and MIDI monitoring window at the top of your concert so it can be viewed at all times. Just go to your display preferences and select the boxes of everything you'd like to be seen. Now this will only be visible in edit mode. So if you'd like to see your CPU meter when in perform mode, you'll have to create an item in the workspace. Just select a regular level meter and drag it into your workspace. Then head back over into edit mode. Click on the meter, then go down to the screen control inspector. Then you'll want to click on actions and scroll down until you see CPU load. Now you'll be able to view the CPU meter while in perform mode. Mainstage has a structure that typically calls for you to choose sounds you'd like to play by selecting different patches and adding them to your patch list. So what if you want to play multiple patches at the same time? Just select all of the patches you'd like to combine, then go up to the settings menu and select new patch from selected patches. Now you'll have multiple sounds layered in a single patch that you can edit and adjust from there. And lastly, a bonus tip for you. If you'd like access to the largest bundle of Mainstage patches available online, go download our free Patch of the Week bundle for Mainstage. We add a new free patch every single week for both Mainstage and Ableton Live. We'll add a link in the description below so you can easily get access to all those free patches. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you found some of these tips practical and helpful. That's all for now. I'm Julia with Sunday Sounds, and I'll see you next time.